Hello mountain bikers and welcome back to your favorite gear show. We've got a bit of a special program for you today because the bike industry kicked into high gear this past month as we all gathered in California for the Sea Otter. We had plenty of coverage from the event both here on the channel and on our website but we thought it would be appropriate to highlight some of the coolest stuff we saw there for you here today as well. So instead of our usual month in a minute we're going with a Sea Otter summary this time instead. As always, after the news, we'll get into some more in-depth reviews with new tools and a new helmet on the menu. Okay, let's go! ODI is bringing out a new version of their licensed Vans Waffle Sole Grip, now with the single lock ring. Project 321 showed us a super slick new center lock to six bolt adapter system that makes it easy to swap between the two standards on their hubs. Kogel has some fresh new oversized pulley wheels and other bling for your derailleur. Hunt is now working with Classified's internal gear 2-speed hub, which allows you to build ultra-wide range transmissions with a smaller cassette. Milkit had a little Baywatch nostalgia when naming their new multi-tool system the Hasseloff. It features plenty of useful tools and can be mounted under your water bottle cage. Hope has a fresh new dropper lever in the works with plenty of adjustability. It'll drop later this year, look out for the review when we can get our hands on it. Deity Darkroom members have a chance to score the legendary T-Mac pedal in this limited edition rosé colorway. Be on it if you want it. They won't be making many of these. E13 is bringing more colors to its range of components, and we've got a nifty new tubeless valve system from them coming up later in the review section as well. Hayes joined the Purple Gang with a limited edition of their excellent Dominion brake. It might be sold out already by the time you're watching this. TRP's drivetrain also qualifies for the Bling Gang. We've got a review in the works, so look out for that to drop in the future. Crank Brothers is adding a tubeless repair kit sleeve to its F-Series multi-tools, coming soon. Ceramic Speed showed us their growing range of MTB products and hinted at something new and exciting dropping soon as well. Stay tuned! Erlins has finally given in and will be giving racers and bike bling aficionados a taste of their racing series, in factory yellow, of course. If that fork will have you going too fast, you may need these new 246mm rotors from Galfer to slow you down. Push had their new inverted fork out in the sunlight for the first time. Well, actually we've ridden it, so keep your eyes peeled for our review, dropping soon. Specialized has added to the 2FO family of flat pedal shoes with this all-new method and a synthetic version of the Roost. Industry 9 showed us their new Enduro 300 alloy wheels with a wide hollow bead that is said to help reduce pinch flats while keeping the weight under control. Ion has created yet another version in their excellent K-Pact family of knee protectors, dubbed the Amp HD, featuring internal hard caps with softer fabrics around it. Need a hand when lifting your e-bike? WTB's new Devo saddle has a handle. Spank has collaborated with Rainier to bring you this limited edition colorway. Hurry up if you want some, there are not too many to go around. Specialized just dropped the Dissident 2, the new version of their downhill and enduro helmet. Raceface dropped the all-new turbine alloy wheel set earlier this month with a wider bead that helps prevent pinch flats. Link below if you want to read our review. 1UP just dropped a smaller version of their composite pedal for riders with smaller feet. Kelly's has produced what they claim is the lightest full-power e-bike currently available. At 20.6 kilos with an 825 watt-hour battery, we're definitely intrigued. For the junior shredders out there looking for a 27-inch ride, YT just launched the Jeffsy Primus 27. Nukeproof showed us their new Dissident Carbon, which looks amazing in real life. They also unveiled some of the new for 2023 frame colors. Fox just launched the DropFrame Pro, which is to the DropFrame what the ProFrame RS is to the ProFrame. They've also just introduced the first visorless helmet they've ever made for the XC and Gravel crowd. Liat's new woody colorway certainly caught our eye. What do you think of it? Italian company Limar is taking aim at the MTB market with this new Etna, an extended coverage lid intended for enduro riding. They've got a couple of half shells as well and a full face on the way. Gas Gas showed us a prototype of their upcoming enduro race bike with suspension that appears to be made by WP. Score was on hand to showcase a couple of new color options, like this sick tinted clear lac over carbon. Speaking of colors, Yoshimura has introduced new 3mm pins for its Chileo flat pedal. 510 showed us their new Kestrel Boa, as well as the latest colors available for the Freerider Pro. Husqvarna dropped the all-new Hardcross, a 170mm e-enduro bruiser. Orange has a couple of new protos going under the strange moniker, like this 160mm mullet featuring a storage compartment in the down tube. Da Vinci is honoring the legacy of Stevie Smith with the launch of the all-new Chainsaw, a 170mm alloy ripper aimed at racers and weekend warriors alike. And to conclude, German e-bike specialist Knox was on hand to showcase their new Helium, a lightweight e-bike featuring the removable Fazua 58Nm motor coupled with a small 252Wh battery. Whoa, what a show that was! It was good to see the bike industry out in force and working hard to bring us our new toys. And speaking of new toys, let's get into some reviews. E13 has been thinking about the old Presta vs Schrader tubeless valve conundrum and they've come up with a solution that lets you run either valve on a common base. 
Taking their plasma valve system as the foundation, all E13 had to do was make a Schrader head as well, and now you have a choice. The base of the valve fits any rim with a Presta hole diameter. It uses a rubber and alloy plate to secure the base from the inside. Then there's a carrier portion that screws into the base stem. The carrier can be either Presta or now also Schrader. If you've often wished you could run Schrader valves on your tubeless wheels, wish no more. This system lets you do it without having to worry about drilling a larger hole in the rim. And because the stem doesn't need to house the Presta valve, it also features a larger than usual diameter, which makes filling sealant through the stem easier and makes it less likely to clog over time. All in all, a pretty nifty little solution. After reviewing the Feedback Sports Pro Mechanic HD repair stand in our February episode and being impressed by its quality and craftsmanship, we're back with two new Feedback products to highlight. They're much smaller this time, but they're still highly functional tools. The Reflex Fixed Torque Ratchet Kit is Feedback's first ride-ready tool kit designed to be taken on the trails, on road trips, or when flying with your bike. The tool features a compact, modular ratcheting handle with 10 steel bits, a 25mm extension, and a preset 5Nm click torque adapter. The ratchet drive internals are built to handle high loads of force, and the handles use a knurled pattern to increase grip. Bits provided include a 2, 2.5, 3, 4, 5 and 6mm hex, T10, 25 and 30 torques, and a 3mm flathead. Retailing for 70 US dollars, the entire kit is incredibly small and packs away neatly in a padded case, making it easy to toss in a pocket, pack or inside your frame if you have internal storage. There are various ways to combine the ratchet handle and extension, making the tool extremely versatile and capable of accessing tricky to reach bolts on your bike. Using the tool configured as a T-handle was our go-to setup for general maintenance and checking bolts. The length of the ratchet is longer than most on-bike tools and offers great leverage, while the addition of the extension was helpful when loosening tight linkage bolts. We only used the 5Nm torque adapter to tighten our stem and rotor bolts, as most bolts use a higher torque spec. Still a nice addition to the kit, the click of the adapter was very noticeable, making it easy to know when torque was set. Our only issue with the kit is that it does not include an 8mm hex bit, limiting the ability to tighten cranks and some linkage pivots. We also found that the magnets inside the ratchet and adapters often weren't strong enough to keep the bit inserted when removing the tool from bolt heads. Overall, the Reflex Ratchet Kit is an awesome on-ride tool. It's compact, offers loads of leverage, and includes bit sizes to handle most repairs. We don't see ourselves tossing the kit in our pocket for everyday riding, although you could if you wanted to, due to its small size, but we plan to keep it in the glove box of our car and take it with us on bigger rides where we carry a pack. Feedback's through axle chain keeper is one of those tools you don't absolutely need in your toolkit, but it does offer a helping hand for certain tasks. Acting as a dummy wheel in place of your cassette, the chain keeper allows your rear derailleur to maintain tension without your wheel installed. This can be helpful when flying with your bike in a bike bag, washing and lubing your drivetrain, or keeping your chain from hitting your frame while your rear wheel is removed. Retailing for only $10, the chain keeper is made out of injection molded and corrosion resistant bio-based plastic. It fits 12mm through axles and does not require any tools to install. Simply remove your rear wheel, insert your rear axle through the chain keeper, and place your chain into the slot on the wheel. While we've made it decades without the chain keeper, we do appreciate its functionality when it comes to chain management. With most quick links being one-time use only, we rarely remove our chain during maintenance or washing, so it's been nice having it neatly out of the way and not grinding against our frame. We also see the tool being a great solution for riders who have to remove their wheels to transport their bicycle or those who use a bike bag that doesn't require removing the rear derailleur. The chain keeper might not revolutionize the way you work on your bike, but it's small and functional, making it a worthwhile addition for any at-home mechanic who wants every tool in the book. Following in the footsteps of their premium Jacko Kineticore helmet, Laser has just launched the Coyote Kineticore. The Coyote retails for nearly half the price, but shares many of the same safety and technical features aimed at trail or enduro riding. The Coyote features Laser's advanced Kineticore technology, an integrated rotational impact protection system that uses strategically placed blocks and channels in the EPS foam that act as crumple zones during an impact. Kineticore allows lasers to integrate rotational impact management into the helmet's shell, reducing weight over systems like MIPS, while still achieving a 5-star Virginia Tech helmet safety rating. The crumple zones also act as channels that improve ventilation by pulling air through the helmet and over your head. The back of the helmet uses a ratcheting turn dial that offers vertical and horizontal adjustment to fine-tune fitment. Additional comfort is achieved via recesses in the shell to accommodate sunglasses and avoid any unwanted temple pressure. The feature list also includes a goggle grip on the back of the helmet to keep your goggles in place, a light mount on the back of the helmet, an integrated adjustable visor, and a magnetic buckle. Laser sells a cold weather conversion liner separately for those brisk winter rides. The Coyote Kineticore helmet is available in six colorways, three sizes, and retails for $109.99 US dollars. 
Like its more expensive sibling, the Coyote Kineticore is an impressively lightweight, comfortable and breathable trail helmet. The lacks of a MIPS-style protection system that adds a layer of material between your head and the helmet's shell allows the Coyote to exhaust heat and pull in air better than most helmets. The two-way adjustable dial made for an exceptionally comfortable and snug fit and was easy to fine-tune to our liking. We also love the convenience of the magnet buckle. We had no issues with our sunglasses fitting under the brow of the helmet. However, just like with the Jackal, we wished the shell featured a designated spot to store glasses while climbing. Overall, the Coyote Kineticore has performed nearly identically to the Jackal we tested last year. Utilizing the same class-leading rotational impact protection system to create a lightweight and breathable helmet, the Coyote offers riders premium features at a fraction of the price of its competitors and is one of the best bang-for-your-buck half-shell helmets on the market. Okay then, that's the end of the show. We hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for taking the time to tune in. As always, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. And until next time, happy trails.